when I really hack into this, it's kind of oily. And this is what I was talking about. When you're doing your out of refrigeration displays for this bad boy, it just gets oily, it's natural, it's, it's okay. Um, but you want to, you don't want to leave it out because if it leaks too much, if the oils get too crazy, it's going to lose some of that flavor within the wheel. So that's why pulling it in and out of refrigeration is such a big deal. It does affect the overall flavor of the cheese. Dude, I need a knife or scissors, any, any of the above. <laughs> Thank you. Reggiano wheel, this will stain your clothes and will never come out. I've had a couple shirts that have just gone down the tube because of Parmesan Reggiano. So if you aren't wearing an apron and you're dealing with a warm wheel, you're going to want to put one on. Um, it's, it's just, it's really hard to get through it. Most likely something is going to end up touching it and you'll never get it out. That oil never comes out. So I guess I should explain what I'm doing because that's helpful. So we have this utensil right here. It's what I was using earlier. It has this little serrated edge right on the nose. This is wonderful for cutting through rind. You don't have to deal with this really clumsy thing. You can deal with this and it just glides. So you want to stick it right where the paste is, any exposed paste where the paste meets the rind. You want to stick it right in there as deep down as it will go until you can't see that little claw anymore and then you want to pull it towards you. So that creates that line for you to go back and cut later. It's going to be kind of hard to see. The edges, the back end is the hardest. All these little corner rim pieces are the thickest in rind and they're kind of the hardest to get through with this little claw hook of a knife. So make sure to go over it a few times. If you go to cut through it with a blade and you didn't get that, you're not going to get through the cheese. Um, and you're probably going to end up creating more of a mess because you're trying to force your way through it. I typically take it and put it on the edge of the table and then run it down. <sighs> Easier to get it that way. So. Once you get through that, go back to your long blade. I guess you could do it a couple different ways. I'll show you this way first. Um, so you can take this blade right here and just kind of like hack into it. You want to wiggle it back and forth. That's what I'm talking about. You get this nice rustic edge. And this is something that you typically don't want to see on your wheels, but Parmesan Reggiano is so beautiful to see it this way. Um, this will create some hole pockets, so when you're doing an out of refrigeration display, make sure to constantly check your cheese when you're pulling it in and out of refrigeration, because you don't be surprised if you see some mold there. You're going to have little pockets of air, and air creates mold. So, especially with all that butter fat in there, all that liquid roaming around, it won't be uncommon to see. Just open up the package, cut off the mold bit, and wrap it back up and put it back out. It's good to go. So the other way that you can get into this bad boy is you could take one of these daggers, they come in a, a few different shapes and sizes, and you just shove it into the crack after you go over it with your hook. Wiggle it back and forth. Sometimes you may need more than one, that's fine. If you're having a real difficult time, you can put in that second one and it just pops right off called crack in the wheel. Yep. <laughs> it's something too that if you do it um, when customers are around, customers are always very interested in it. It's not something that you see every day, so if you're hacking into one, don't be surprised if someone stops and watches you. We do not want to use the cheese wire cutting this cheese. We want you to crack it with the tools. That's because we want that look in the stores. Crystals forming in the pockets of what is that? 
So, Lindsay, do you want to touch on that, Miss Cheese yeah. Certified? It's um, a tyrosine, it's called tyrosine, it's an amino acid. It's a produced through the aging of cheese. It's not salt, it's not been added into the beginning of it. It's a desired outcome through aging. It's lovely, it gives you that beautiful crunch. You see it in cheddars and in mm -hmm. that's that's We have a year old uh, Lombardi that has the same crystals in it. And you'll actually see them in Parmesan Reggiano too. Anything that has a nice age to it, you typically see those salt, cr or they're not salt, they're Tell me the name again. Tyrosine. I always forget it and I revert back. When I first started working in cheese, someone told me it was salt and it's stuck in my brain. This is the wrong answer. Never tell anybody it's salt. <laughs> but um, you see it a lot. And in really aged cheeses, you'll also get that texture. When you're going through it, you'll get that nice little crunch. And that's always nice. Um, and it's a nice sign of a really well-aged cheese. So regardless of how you get here, when you get to this point and you're dealing with a really small piece, just go ahead and switch from using these little babies to a knife. Um, it's just gonna be a lot more efficient for you to go about it this way. You always wanna do it with the rind facing up and keep, keep using your little tool right here to get through the rind. Um, once again, if you don't use it, you're just going to run into more effort trying to push down. You may get through the rind. It's just a lot more muscle, a lot more labor that you really don't have to do. And it takes up more time. So you just wiggle the blade back and forth. Sometimes you can just come straight down so you'll get that, that nice, nice artisan looking piece of Parmesan. So do this again. No, because you just spent all that time making it look that way. So you don't want to go through and then clean off all the edges. I mean, if you want that artisan look, which is something that you want when you put it on out of refrigeration display, you might as well just cut it with a wire, which is something that you shouldn't do. You should cut it this way. So try to remain, keep it, keep it looking like this. And that's why I'm saying you're going to have a little bit more upkeep when it comes to keeping an out of refrigeration display of this. You may even find some mold when it comes to your refrigerated end. It's just not going to mold as fast. It's gonna happen, especially with this nice artisan look, but when you go to remove the mold, try not to clean off the whole side and make it one flat edge. You just wanna go in there with like a paring knife and just try to cut that little bit out and try to leave that artisan look as much as possible. And then all the little shards that are not attached to a piece, we're gonna cup up and sell. So you'll cup them up and put them on the display. People love that stuff. I think we're going to switch to wrapping. So okay. I'm going to, the last thing I wanted Lindsay to show you.